Mr. President? That wasn't me. <laughs> um, uh, now, I have to say, I am just going to read this bio rather than summarize it because a lot of time and effort went into this and I, I just don't want to screw anything up under the pressure. So, um, so our guest speaker today is Dr. Mark Crail. In early June of 1993, 28 years ago, after a long and arduous search, the Kent Board of Education threw in the tile and hired Mark Crail to become their new superintendent. Unnamed sources have confirmed that this was done after an all-night school board bender and under the influence of a good bit of alcohol. Following a long and distinguished line of outstanding school leaders, including Dr. Bob Stanton, Mr. Ken Cardinal, and Donna Lytle, the Kent community was left scratching its collective head over the recent turn of events. For Mark Crail, that momentary lapse proved to be the opportunity of a lifetime. In the Crail household, it is still referred to as, quote, the miracle on DePeister Street, end quote. In retrospect, hiring Mark, who refused to leave for over 13 years until he retired in October of 2007, wasn't a total disaster. He made a concerted effort to hire a number of people who had no other real hopes of finding gainful employment. A partial list of those misfits include Mary Beth Harper, uh, coming to mind as to Dr. Joe Giancola, Tom Larkin, and Roger Sedoti. Anyway, Mark's back today to tell us about his latest scam. We welcome back uh, former Kent Rotarian, Dr. Mark Crail, who's coming to us today from his home in Mount Dora, Florida. Um, but with all sincerity, uh, I, I do wanna say um, we were very fortunate to have Dr. Crail here for 13 years. Um, it, it was an honor and his love and passion of serving kids in the community um, was outstanding. And um, as a plug, here is a copy of his book he'll be talking about, Tales Out of School. And with no further ado, Dr. Mark Crail. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Um, well, it's great to um, be with uh, Kent Rotary today. Um, I was a uh, Rotarian here in Mount Dora for a couple of years after um, leaving Kent. Um, but I wasn't able to maintain that because of my, um, my work schedule. I thought um, maybe I'd just spend a couple of minutes since so many old friends uh, from Kent Rotary to catch you up a little bit on, uh, on our family. Uh, my wife, Jane, who was frantically helping Tom try to get me uh, uh, logged into the Zoom meeting today. Um, uh, Jane is working at, uh, in the um, animal education program at the Seas at Epcot um, at, Disney, uh, at Disney right now uh, because our old jobs, which were at um, Disney's Animal Kingdom, um, have kind of gone by the wayside because of the pandemic. There haven't been any school field trips or other guided tours, but we're hoping those will maybe come back. And if so, I'll, I'll join her back at Disney again. Um, my younger son, Dan, and his wife, um, Reverend Molly Bolton, um, are living and working in Boone, North Carolina. Uh, Dan is a high school uh, counselor at Watauga High School there in Boone um, after spending 10 years at the Auburn Career Center in, in uh, Geauga and Lake County uh, there in Ohio. Uh, my other son, um, John, and his wife, Elisabetta, uh, live and work in Sydney, Australia. Um, uh, Elisabetta is, uh, is Italian, real Italian, not Italian American, and uh, she teaches Italian in the Sydney Public Schools. Um, uh, John is the program director for uh, the Fred Hollows Foundation, which does eye care surgeries and procedures for um, people uh, who need uh, that kind of care in 21 different countries around the world, and Sydney is their home. But most importantly, they have two daughters, um, our granddaughters, Elodie, who's four and a half, and Sienna, who's a little more than a year old. Um, I, I guess that's it. They're all doing well, and, um, and um, 
Uh, if John Flynn is watching, um, my son Dan wants uh, Ross's uh, contact information. So John, send me an email or a text or something with Ross's phone number um, for Dan. Um, so um, I've been doing a, a, a few things um, in ret retirement, working at Disney's Animal Kingdom in the Animal Science and the Environment Program for the past uh, 13 years uh, until about a year and a half ago when COVID came and, and that sort of went away. I've also been working with Lake County Water Authority. Um, we live in Lake County, Florida with over 1400 named lakes and the Water Authority is a county agency um, that protects the quality of the water for boaters and fishermen and stuff like that. So I love doing that. And I've been on Mount Dora City Council now for six years um, and um, Maybe we'll be some more. I'm up for election this year. Who, who knows? They could come to their senses at, at any minute. Um, so uh, the book that Tom held up, Tales Out of School, was a long time in the making. Um, uh, Winnie Warner, uh, my friend at Kent Schools, um, helped me along the way. My tech skills were no better when I was working than it is than they are uh, now that I'm retired. So. Um, I would get up real early in the morning and do some writing and when he would take some time and, and uh, uh, put it in good order. Um, and I don't know, two or three years ago, um, she presented me with a disc. That's how old this, this stuff was, a, 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 a disc. And, and she said, I'm afraid the technology is gonna change and we won't ever be able to use this. I'm giving it to you, it's your responsibility. So I put it in a desk drawer and didn't do anything with it until um, the pandemic hit and I had a little extra time on my hands. So I dug that out, that, that uh, first draft of a book I started about 15 or more years ago. Um, and I was able to um, get back into it um, and finished it up. Um, and it was published on Amazon through Amazon Publishing um, last September. Um, and that's the Tales Out of School book, which is, a a novel, a fictional account of a first year teacher and his um, struggles. Um, it's more than loosely based on, <laughs> on my first year of teaching, but it is a novel. So it's um, definitely not 100% uh, true, um, but most of the things that are in the book did happen. And the reason I mention that is because um, Really, the book is based on some beliefs um, that, that um, when I was doing things right, um, these were the beliefs that um, sort of guided um, my teaching and, and later on uh, my time as an administrator. Um, and those beliefs um, I found really fit well with the beliefs of the Disney company where I've been so happy, happily working for um, uh, the last number of years. Um, one of those beliefs is that customers judge their experience with an organization by the way they're being treated as a person. So I think that's a very important thing and it was kind of a guiding principle um, and it's reflected um, uh, in the book. Uh, another one is um, that outcomes are delivered by teams, but impressions are, uh, are delivered by individuals. So teams are important, but individuals are really, really important in any enterprise. So it was important um, to hire um, cheerful, empathetic people. Um, and um, we always tried to do that. And we always figured that um, two heads or three heads were better than one. Um, so in hiring teachers and administrators, and by my count, um, four of our uh, former employees have gone on to become superintendents um, in their own right. And, and that including most recently, uh, uh, Dr. Christine Fowler-Mack, who is the, about to begin as superintendent in the Akron Public Schools, and that's, that's pretty terrific. Um, 
Um, so uh, hiring the right people, uh, very important. And then uh, sort of a Disney tie in here. Um, at Disney, there are four cornerstones of the business. The first and foremost one is safety. Now, the Disney people would say there's no, you get no credit for providing a safe environment. The only time safety gets mentioned is when there's a breach in safety. Um, so safety is important, but it kind of it, it kind of has no um, impact unless uh, that there's a problem with safety. The next most important one is courtesy, and I think courtesy is really important. And again, in the book, um, you'll see over over and over again um, the importance of of um, courtesy and and tr trying to treat people right. Um, show is the next one and the show is the experience that means that um, what you do um, when you are what disney calls on stage and teachers are on stage all the time from the from the minute the kids walk in to the minute they they leave um, teachers are definitely on stage and and the final one is efficiency you want to be able to do the things that you do um, in a manner especially in the school business that is efficient so that the taxpayers who are footing the bill for this whole enterprise um, are satisfied that their investment, their dollars have been in invested um, wisely. Um, someone told me one time that first rate managers hire first rate people and then turn them loose. Um, and that was, that is always important and while the first book, Tales Out of School, is all about a rookie uh, teacher, the second book, which by the way, will be um, printed for the first time tomorrow, um, and it's called More Tales Out of School because I'm such a uh, creative person, that, that was my new title. Um, that's about uh, same character, but his first year as a rookie principal. So some of these things come more into play in the second book. Um, the, uh, I, I should tell you that Amazon is no longer my publisher. A few months ago, um, Mary Beth Harper suggested that the cover of my book um, wasn't very appealing, uh, kind of amateurish, no picture of the author on the back and so on and so forth. And Mary Beth said, you can do better. So I contacted a publisher uh, in our area and asked him about um, designing a cover for me. We got talking and he read uh, my book and then he read the draft of the second book and he said, I'll design your cover. Plus I wanna be your publisher as well. So the subsequent books be beginning right now are published by Sea Hill Press. And I can't tell, can, can you all see the uh, What's over my shoulder here, this website? <laughs> Can you read that? Mark your. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. I, I'm not able to hear anybody. Uh, Randy, yeah. your, your microphone was mute when you were speaking. Okay, Mark, your camera is not on. Oh, it's not. Oh, no. well, that's real bad. All right. Um, somebody help me out here. It says recording. I don't have the camera covered up. What What do I need to do to get the camera on? So at the at the bottom of your screen, you'll see something that looks like a camera that'll say start a video. Oh, yep. I see it now. If you click on that. All right. How's there that? Go. All right. there. Super. Okay, great. Now, I'm sorry, I, I, that's how bad at technology I am. Can you read the, can you see what's behind me here? That's the website for all the books now. It is very simple, www.crailtales.com. The new publisher is a company called Sea Hill Press. Um, and they will be, um, um, we're moving over the original Tales Out of School book to Sea Hill Press. And um, 
and the new book, More Tales Out of School, which like I say is uh, first day of publication will be tomorrow. Um, and both of those books are available. If you just go to that website, you can order them if you'd like. And um, there's a special uh, preview deal going on right now where you get both books for uh, $20, $10 a piece, which is about a 50% um, discount, which um, which is kind of a kind of a cool thing. Um, so uh, I guess a, a little bit more about the um, about the books. It was interesting to me to write. Um, well, well, they always say that authors should write about something they know. So for me, um, education was probably a better uh, topic than say uh, space flight or uh, deep sea fishing or something like that because I don't I don't do that stuff um, uh, and for me life has always been um, about stories um, and so um, while um, uh, while some people might um, use a scholarly approach um, these books are just fun and they're just um, little funny stories or, or sad stories, um, but they all sort of go back to those things that I mentioned before, hiring the right people, providing courtesy um, in service and, and things like that. So um, th that's, been, um, that's been kind of fun to do, um, but the characters are not real. Um, um, there are some that you may recognize, um, but they're, um, they're, it, 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 it is a novel, I guess would be the, the best way um, to, to say it. Um, just a couple more things I wanted to, to um, touch base uh, on, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I'm so sorry that that video wasn't, wasn't on um, for such a long time. Um, I had an experience at Disney a few years ago um, we at Disney did a, a program for Price Waterhouse Cooper Accounting. Um, their senior, their college senior internship program, if the participating students um, did a great job, they bring them to Orlando um, where they present them with their new contract and let them know which branch office they're going to be in. Um, and we have hosted part of that conference um, for them by doing an elephant related program. Um, that's my kind of my specialty. And a few years ago, I, 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 our name tags ha have our, um, our city on them and mine says Kent, Ohio. And I had a young lady in my group and I always asked the the guests where they're from. And she said she was from Kent, Ohio. And I pointed to my name tag and I said, I'm from Kent, Ohio as well. Um, and she looked at my name tag and she looked at me and she said, are you Dr. Crail? And I said, yeah. And she said, I remember when you read my, cl my kindergarten class, a story. Um, and so that was, a, that was pretty neat as, as, um, as far as, um, as I'm concerned, and one of those really neat stories. Um, so that's what I've written about. Um, if you know a teacher, um, if you are or were a teacher, if you attended school, I think it would be uh, worth your while to, um, to, to check out the, the books. I, I hope you'll enjoy them. They're meant to be fun um, and um, not real heavy duty reading or anything, um, but it would um, mean a lot to me if, if, if you were interested enough to, to take a look at them. All right, <clears throat> thank you very much, Mark. Anybody have any questions for him? How successful has your book been so far? How many? Uh... How many copies have you sold? Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a great question. I don't think J.K. Rowling or John Grisham have uh, thrown in the towel exactly um, yet, uh, but the first book um, has sold a little over 500 copies, which um, 
which Sea Hill Press thought was um, a pretty good start. One of the advantages for me of going with a publisher is that they can help with the marketing. And that's been such a difficult thing during the pandemic. Book clubs haven't been meeting, um, uh, even the Buckeye Book Fair, which is held in Worcester. And there's one here in Florida called the Royal Palms um, Book Fair um, ha have happened kind of remotely. Um, so I think they're gonna be able to help me, but, uh, but the answer to the question is a, a, a bit more than 500 uh, copies, which is pretty modest, but I, I guess it's a start anyway. Yeah. All right, Mayor Beth, do you have a question? <clears throat> Yes, I was going to say, I really enjoyed the book and it is really laugh aloud funny in a lot of places. But Mark, you should tell a little bit about the setting for the book. You didn't even mention where uh, this young man teaches. Yeah, that's that. Thanks, Mary Beth. Um, so um, I started teaching in Worcester, Ohio, um, and just south of Worcester is Holmes County, Amish country. Um, and my parents, when they were retired, lived in a little town down in Amish country called Walnut Creek, um, where every other vehicle is a, is a buggy. Um, and so I set the story at Walnut Creek Elementary um, because I just thought the setting would be of interest to people, maybe not so much people from Ohio or Pennsylvania who are used to um, uh, being around Amish people, but a lot of other folks have no idea uh, of the cultural differences and, and so on that the, that the Amish bring. And truthfully, I was looking for kind of an interesting setting, not that I'm comparing uh, my work to James Harriet um, of All Creatures Great and Small and, and his other books about his veterinary practice um, uh, back in the 30s and 40s, but um, I was looking for an interesting setting, um, and so Holmes County is 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 that place. Hey, Mark, <clears throat> Mark, it's Howard. I just want you to. Um, I want everybody to know that we didn't drink the night before we hired you. We started drinking after you got the job. Uh, oh, <laughs> I get it now. Okay. Well, however, however you did it, it worked out, and I appreciate it. <laughs> David Dix, did you have a question? Uh, what's, what is the uh, uh, pandemic climate like there where you are at Mount Dora? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, so uh, as you've probably read, our uh, Florida governor um, has been um, all about getting things reopened and, and so on, uh, but our city um, has been a little more careful uh, about that. We have had mask, uh, we have had mask rules and social distancing rules and things like that until about three weeks ago when the governor declared that cities couldn't have their own individual rules and we had to follow um, state mandates. So we're pretty well opened up. We have, um, we wanted to, uh, Mount Dora residents to have an opportunity to get immunizations early. So our city actually hosted a website or a, uh, an immunization site um, in town. We staffed it with our firefighters, our police officers, and our volunteers in cooperation with our health department. And we were able to provide a little bit over 32,000 immunizations um, of course, all of those were not Mount Dora residents, but we have, our town is about 15,000. So if you look at it that way, we, we had about two shots per man, woman, and child in Mount Dora. So locally, we did what I think was a pretty good job. Um, and yeah, uh, but uh, the theme parks are open back up um, at reduced um, attendance levels and things like that. Thank you. Lang, got a question. You're, you're muted, Lang. Lang, you're still muted. Unmute. There, you go. there you go. Mark, when you were writing your book, were, did you find it uh, 
Were, did you have to spend some time in Holmes County or, or how, how did you arrange that kind of environment? Oh, that's a great question, Lang. Good to see you, by the way. Yeah. Um, um, well, I had spent a lot of time in Holmes County. I, I grew up in Stark County, and so we would make periodic family trips down to Amish country. Um, my parents lived there in retirement, so I had a lot of contact there. And then I lived in Worcester for a number of years, and it was just uh, uh, literally a few miles to, to go down there. So I had pretty good background there. Um, and I had also lived in Ashland, which is kind of on the edge of Amish country uh, as well. Yeah, um, thank you. Good to it, see you. It's not, it's not so technical that I needed to have a lot of um, theological information on the Amish and so on. It, it, it's uh, not that deep. Yeah. Well, your books sound very, very interesting. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions for Mark? If not, I'm sure, Mark, you're well aware that we always have a responder to our speakers. And today, that's going to be Debbie Cruz. Hi, Mark. It's great to see you and to have you back in Kent today, at least virtually. Great to see you. Um, I cannot vouch for anything about those late night board meetings where uh, Mark was hired, but I can say it was a pleasure to work with Mark for over 13 years while he served as superintendent for the Kent City Schools. Um, Mark, thank you so much for sharing with us today some tales out of school. Uh, your stories and anecdotes to me have always been just so engaging, and this would be a great read for anyone who loves kids and values education. Um, relationships are so important in any field, especially in education. And I'm so glad you've highlighted that um, in your stories. I'm not surprised at all that you continue to serve your local community now in Mount Dora as a council person and also staying very active in education with Disney. So good for you and Jane. So happy for that. Um, many of you already know that through Mark's leadership, we were able to pass the bond issue back in 1996 to build Stanton Middle School. And now Mark, as you know, as you probably know, because I know you follow the district, we are now paying off those bonds. We're making the last payment and we were able to pass the $25 million no new tax bond issue thanks to that first Stanton uh, bond issue. And now we're doing projects at each of the school buildings. So thanks to your leadership and Stanton looks as good today as it did when we opened it in 1999. Um, thank you so much for lifting up the work of all of our educators who prepare our next generation. Congratulations on this first book, and we will look forward to more Tales Out of School. Please tell Jane I said hi and the boys as well. Thanks, Debbie. I was just thinking how old the treasurer must be to have retired 20-year um, bonds and, and You'll probably be there when the next um, group gets uh, uh, an extra. Careful <laughs> now. <laughs> you, you do so much great work. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Debbie, for your marks. And thank you so much, uh, Mark. I'm sure it goes without saying, if you're ever in the Kent area, please be our guest at a uh, Kent Rotary meeting in person. And um, the other thing is, uh, you know, bring your, with that, I'm going to end the meeting, but if anyone wants to hang around and chat informally, you're free to do that. <laughs>